Oh, my head's cut off. <laughs> so you're not the best stand-in for me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It's your two favorite idiots, Beck, for another tool review. How you doing, buddy? You called me an idiot. Me first. <laughs> Hi everybody, uh, I don't really have time to do this, but I'm doing it because I love you. Today we've got a cool piece of equipment that was sent to us from none other than Vivor.com, my new favorite offshore budget tool supply company. <laughs> In here is a mag drill or a magnetic drill, something I've known about for a long time and uh, I've always been curious how useful they are. Do you know what a mag drill is? Yeah, I've been wanting one for years. I used to, one of my jobs used to be a locksmith and we would have to drill through really thick pieces of door Yeah. on site while the door is on. Just Metal these, door. Yeah, these big stainless steel thick suckers. I've been wanting one for years and... <laughs> well, they're expensive, but this one... Why I hadn't gotten one. <laughs> this one isn't so bad. Put the price here, at least at the time of filming. But we're gonna crack into it. Hopefully you can see up top there. This has been sitting on my desk for a few few weeks. Haven't had time to get to it. And uh, you know, Vivor has, they sent us the anvil. If you haven't seen that video, go click up here. And they were so stoked with that video that they offered to send this over. And I'm like, well, if it's not half bad, I have a lot of uses for it. We have one use for it today, which is why we're opening it. I want to do the unboxing here with you guys and then we'll put it right to work and see how it works. Here we are. Looks like we got all of our cutters and then the drill itself. Let's see what all we got. Comes with a rope. <laughs> Instructions. Yeah, so most of you guys can throw those away as soon as you get it. Oh, uh, this must be a lubricant. Yeah, I saw that in the picture. Cord doesn't feel half bad. A lot of times these Chinese tools will have really stiff plastic feeling cords. It actually feels nice and soft and decent quality. Ooh, really goodies inside. Goodies. Goodies. A little uh, flow control. Oh, some tape. All right. So here's the drill. This is the model J1C-40 magnetic drill. 40 millimeter capacity, 110 volts. 40 mil capacity, that's pretty mm -hmm. good. 1100 watts, I guess max traction, that's a magnetic unit. I thought magnets were measured in Gauss, so I don't. I guess Newtons, 12,000 Newtons of clamping force. 500 RPM, 550 RPM, and 125 millimeter stroke. That's cool. Um, so basically, you've got, looks like a piece of aluminum extrusion for the ways, which is kind of surprising. Aluminum wares. Looks like you've got some aluminum on the inside. You can see where they cut costs. But this works like a drill press where you have a handle and, you know, there's a rack and pinion back in there. And then this is the drill motor with the standard three quarter inch arbor which uh, can accept these really cool cutters. And of course, you've got the control panel. Turn your magnet on with that. Feels okay, turn the drill on with that. I guess we got a speed control for the drill. That's cool. A little bit of, a little bit of weeble wobble. I mean, these things normally retail for like three grand. Yeah. And this one is a 10th of the price, so I can't be too picky. If it works at all, it's a pretty good deal. There's already shavings in the bottom of this. It's perfect. So <clears throat> these, I learned this from the one and only Adam Savage. This is one of his favorite tools. Uh, but mag drills typically use what is called an annular cutter, which looks like that. It's essentially a hole saw, but they're, you know, this is tool steel or some of them probably have carbide tips. These don't look to be carbide tips, so this is just high-speed steel. So this is, I will ruin this <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but the cool part is this is the arbor they use. It's a three-quarter inch arbor. 
And so with a set screw backed out, these go in the end here. And this is standard across all mag drills. I was just at the welding supply store this morning and asked Frank about it. So I can get the nice Hogan annular cutters to go in this cheaper drill. But anyway, the cool part about these is that in, in normally in order to drill a hole this big with a standard drill bit, you are getting all that material out of there from the dead center of the hole all the way to the, um, the outer walls of the hole. You're removing all that material, which takes a lot more effort. These are just removing a ring of material. You know, you're basically cutting a plug. All that material in the middle stays, and then it just gets rid of this outer rim of material. So they're faster, more efficient. You can cut, you know, for instance, I don't know if we're gonna use it for this, but if I had to drill through this three quarter inch block of steel, it would be much more efficient to use an annular cutter like this versus a traditional drill bit that has to get all that material out of the way. See the difference? So, I guess we can test some things. I wanna see how strong that magnet is. So, how much, 1,200 Newton Thousand. pounds? 12,000 Newtons. 2,697, so almost 2,700 pounds of force. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. I mean, don't try to break it, but that's way more force than it'll ever. Yeah. And you just turn it off. I guess it's gonna demagnetize. That's cool. Crazy. So, yeah. Oh, you could probably use that pretty good for magnetized screwdriver. Probably. <laughs> I'm guessing this Allen key is going to be metric. Guessed it. I'm not super concerned about that crappy lubrication system right now. Nice solid mounting suit solution. Oh, this is what it is. Do you fart right next to me? Sponsored by Jimmy John's. Thanks, Jimmy John's. Really appreciate it. <laughs> it had nothing to do with Wyatt. You You're gonna do it anyway, aren't you? Yes, I am. Wyatt's hooking up the lubrication system because it makes him happy. I'm predicting that it's going to not work or be helpful. You might be surprised. Chances are you won't be. <laughs> yeah, that's my that's my thought. <laughs> Wyatt is hooking up the included lubrication system, which is essentially a paint sprayer hopper, two quick disconnect things and a piece of really cheap aquarium tubing. Those are pneumatic fittings, so I wonder how well they work for fluid. So where does the, where does the fluid go? It looks like it must go on the inside somehow. What is this thing? Oh, that just, <laughs> that just stays there to keep it from spinning. Mm. That literally just snap, smashes against that to keep that collar from spinning while the rest of the shaft spins. That is hilarious. I guess it's not dumb if it works. It's still pretty dumb. But hey, it's a $300 drill. Maybe I'm being too critical. Let's read the instructions. Keep the workplace clean. A messy workplace and workstation will lead to an accident. Are you? No, I'm just talking to you. You're the one oh, reading it. Sure. <laughs> Got it. To ensure that the working environment of Botox, electric tools do not get wet in the rain. In wet places and flammable and explosive places, workplace needs to maintain sufficient brightness. <laughs> Beware of electric shock accident. Avoid body contact with objects on the ground. Do not let children close. No idlers in the workplace, but cannot let people touch the tool or the power supply connecting wires. The dress to the right. Do not wear loose fitting clothing or jewelry, so as not to get involved in rotating parts. Outdoor work, wear non-slip shoes, wear long hair, should work, wear hats. <laughs> <laughs> The use of protective equipment during the operation, wearing goggles and wearing a dust mask, 
Do not damage the wire. Yank the wire plug is strictly prohibited. <laughs> <laughs> Must avoid wire touch hot. Grease and sharp metal edges with the handle to keep clean and dry stained with grease. Use fixed work workpiece clamp or vice clamping workpiece then by hand fixed work safety. <laughs> that what what? <laughs> Do not stretch out the more work to maintain stability and balance of the body when the job. <laughs> Maintenance tools. Keep the knife sharp. Cleaning should be conducive to the safe operation. That's the best sentence in the whole thing. Matters needing attention. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> I could read these all day. Here's one of the parts. All my cutters. So these are all the cutters. We've got everything from, I put a 12 mil in here and it looks like it goes up to a 27 mil that included, but it should be able to cut up to 40 apparently. I need it's 27 for something else. Do not use gloves. Let's give a fair bit of advice. Well, there you go. What do you think about that? Magnet works. <laughs> Let's try to drill something. I wonder how cutting, cutting oil versus like regular automotive oil, uh, is there a viscosity difference? Uh, there's a big viscosity difference. So, I want to set up a scenario for you guys. This is typically the reason you use a mag drill. Let's imagine for a moment that you're up in the sky on a steel structure and this is a centerpiece of an I-beam and you got to drill through it. You could stand here with a regular drill at an off angle, hurt yourself, break your wrist, drop the drill, whatever, or we can use a mag drill. So this fluid reservoir thing, what? It's, uh, it, it doesn't work. Well, we haven't even put any fluid in it and we know it's not gonna work. Well here, hold this and I'll show the people what we're talking about. So, mag drills are normally to help you do things like this, right? How about that? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this well, let's is see how the oil <laughs> just this is gravity dependent, has to be upright. But this drill, I mean, I could probably keep it upright for most of my stuff, but if this was being used in the field, it would be drilling on all sorts of angles. So, I'm gonna take that off. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> As, as, as good a job as you did installing it, why? Well, I, I, Look, I wanted to see what the new package was. This is an unboxing video, right? That's true, that's true. And now we've shown the people, and uh, I'm not gonna be spilling oil all over my shop just to show you how it doesn't work. You can take my word for it. I'm like nervous. I don't wanna like let it go. All right, so this is a piece of quarter inch clamped in a vise, and I've got the magnet on. That's pretty good, man. Confidence inspiring. All right. Well, we're gonna do this live. Let's see what happens. So we got our, my speed controller is in what I assume the all the way slow position. Yeah, with a this is the 12 mil, so the plug only ends up being kind of not big. Look at that, though. 
Who knows how long that'll stay that sharp, but there's very little burr on the back side, front side. Look cute. Oh, look at that little plug. Probably really hot, huh? It's extremely hot. Well, that's funny. The shavings get caught by the magnet, but that is a nice hole. Cool. But this is why this tool exists, in my opinion. I'm not an expert, but off kilter, you know, here wouldn't be too hard to manhandle a regular drill because it's chest height, but let's say we had to drill a hole in the bottom of that I-beam up there. That'd be a real pain in the butt, but with this thing, holds itself in, and then it takes very little effort just to walk it in with this thing. That was a nice hole all the way through. Nice surface finish. I will say this thing wobbled quite a bit at the beginning of the hole, but once it, and you can tell the hole's a little bit off of where it, where it started. Uh, I imagine that has a little bit to do with the fact that this drill is mounted to a, a one? piece of aluminum. Yeah, let's try a big one. Uh, let's keep our 27 happy. Okay. 24. Look at everything it came with. So I got 23, 18, 15, 13, 20, 16, 26. Let's go with 26. I wanted to show the people what it's like to change a cutter here, What? 26 on there. I guess so they're all 25 mil deep, yeah. just different diameters. So you got these two set screws, and as I'm told, this is how they all mount. You have those two flat spots on the three quarter inch arbor. Hopefully that is actually three quarter inch because then I can get some nice American made cutters. America. 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 Probably don't need to Donkey Kong this. Mm -mm. It's nice that there's two. One would inevitably. Oh, cool. Now let's look at this real quick. Let's get another one at 20. I want to see what that one hole did. If it dulled the corners at all? Well, it's got a weird shape to it. Yeah, I imagine it's for like chip evacuation or something. Yeah. It looks pretty good. It does seem pretty good. I mean, mild steel is important. You know, if we're drilling over a weld, that's important to pay attention to because the weld is harder than the base metal. Better put these back in the right box. Yes, please. Yeah, I'll need to make a storage place for this. It's about time for me to make a big like wall cubby unit for some things. Well, let's see what happens now. You want to run it? Yeah. Over here, move it to a different place. That way you can experience the whole, the whole thing. By the way, that turns the magnets off. Oh, look at that. You can see the two magnets down here. That's cool. Oh, it's fun. I felt it. I'm going to try a little bit of an angle so I can... Zoink. <laughs> you can see it suck in there. Yeah. That's cool. That's kind of fun. I don't want to go too fast. That's how you dull these things out. Give it a break to shed the chip. There you go. Here it comes. What a noise. Now you gotta make sure to hit the correct button to stop it. Oh, moving. that's a good point. You gotta turn I the drill off. I almost hit this while it was running. Oh. Don't wear gloves with this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you gotta listen to the instructions. <laughs> I wonder if while the drill is on, it, it would be smart if it nullifies this switch. Well, why don't we try that while it's on the table? Yeah, yeah, for sure, not here. And that's your plug. So that's all the material that it didn't have to cut in order to make this beautiful hole here. Look at that. I wonder if these holes have any overlap in inches. Yeah, let's, uh, let's measure this. So let's see, this is allegedly a what? 26, I believe. 26? Uh, 1.025 inches. 1.024. Oh, that's acceptable. Cool. So it's accurate and it's definitely millimeters. It is not a nice round number, but that's 
That's really the main reason so far that I see to buy the American cutters is they will be American sizes. Well, while you got the calipers out, don't you, what, do you want to see if it's three quarter? Oh yeah. Yep, they couldn't get around that. So good, these have the three quarter inch arbor, which means I can put the nice Hogan bits in this nice Vivor drill. So you can see where they cut corners. I'm not gonna do what AVE does on his reviews, but you can tell this, the drill itself is screwed to an aluminum extrusion, which is the first obvious place they cut cost. And then that aluminum extrusion doesn't have hardened ways. The aluminum is just using its own Picatinny sort of system. And then there's some liners. Yeah. I wonder if aluminum, I mean, this is the cast piece that they machined and then maybe steel or maybe aluminum liners. So that part is definitely gonna need hey, to look, be- look, you can see this move. Oh, sure. So that part's gonna need to be kept clean and lubricated for sure. Oh, that's the lighter itself. Mm -hmm. Moving. Yeah. So that's uh, not, I think that's to be expected. It's pretty nice, I mean, the drill bit itself settles in a position that's not exactly in line with where the drill rests normally, but that's probably because as you push down, it flexes out a little bit. But heck, that's pretty good. All right, let me, let's try, make sure and hit the right switch. Well, make sure you're ready for it, yeah. This is what I wanted to see, where I almost screwed up. So if it's on, let's keep this up. Yep, that is an independent circuit. Yeah, so if you're running this thing upside down, make sure you hit big red and not small red. Big square red first. Don't hit that. Yeah, that's a bit of an oversight. I wonder if, maybe not an oversight, but maybe just kind of what you get when you get a $300 mag drill. I mean, if that was the first thing I was about to do, like there's bound to be somebody screwing up by doing that. Yeah, if you have it hanging from an I-beam up there and you go to and turn it off with gloves and you can't see it. And you've got it on. Problem. Problem. But it's obviously a machine that needs to be sort of respected and understood. But once you do that, that's a pretty nice capability. I mean, that's a end mill quality hole. I mean, for the price, yeah. For the price, I mean, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Which leads us neatly into our actual practical use. So we're helping a local design firm build a prototype version of this cool chair. And Wyatt here has been doing the steel frames. So this is one by three uh, rectangular tubing, two crossbars at the bottom, and then one inch pipes that go across that will sus uh, suspend this leather in here with some custom made fasteners out of this one inch stock that'll hold everything together. So we need to drill, and I'm fairly confident now seeing that thing, that it'll work. But we need to drill a hole on the inside of one wall of this tube. The outside will have a 3 8 hole. Inside will have an, a 1.05 inch hole. Almost with that is, so we'll use the 27 mil. This is what we need to make happen. We need that pipe to go through one wall of this tubing to create our support structures. I will illustrate what we are trying to do a little better later if that didn't make any sense. So but, the smallest one they have is a 12? That's correct. Because if we did a 10 mil, then we could go straight through and then replace it with the 27. Well, let's, that way the holes locate the same while it's Well, still. let's just take time and mark it on both sides. You know, it won't take too much longer. But there's no locating perfectly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, the first hole would locate the second hole, I guess. It's important to really ease into the first part of this hole and let it just establish a little bit of a start so that the rest of the bit guides cleanly. But yeah, that's the Vivor Mag Drill model J1C-40 and uh, we're gonna we're gonna put it to use. So obviously I'm a little scattered right now, but we're just filming stuff for you, Walker. <laughs> Let's line up our cutters from big to small. We'll take a few beauty shots and then we'll, then we'll get to work. Want them out? Nah. This. Oh, that's the centering piece. Frank was telling me about that. 
How does it work? Is it spring loaded? No, but I guess it goes. Well, it probably doesn't need to be. So we're going to be using the 27 first. Let's go ahead and pop that out. So I'm assuming that this should locate and then just lift up. Yeah, so it would mean that it's, imp I wonder if there's a spring in there. Yep, spring loaded. That'll also knock the plug out. Uh-huh. So we got to drill a pilot hole. No. Yeah. We just uh, made a divot. Oh yeah. So if I made a divot right here, made a divot right there. With your center punch. Not the big one, but the little one. Close enough. I don't know that we're exactly ready to do this yet, but. You can feel the, the vibration of the magnet. Yeah. Doesn't quite make it through that, that's funny. So we still only drill through one side with that. Uh, inside or outside large hole? Inside. So let's not drill this. <laughs> Yeah, this is the mock-up so far of this chair. That's the sit part and that's the ottoman part. It'll be a cross piece down low and uh, we'll make our pieces out of that. And then we'll make, I'm using this three quarter inch by three inch to make a, a tab that'll be welded to here, not there, but down low where that hits. And this will go over it and we'll through drill. So, Vivor mag drill, kind of cool. Now we'll use it in a project. I don't know if we'll cover this whole project, but uh, we'll cover part of it to show you what we've used it for so far. And it might give you ideas on what you could use it for if you wanna buy one. By the way, if you wanna buy one, we have an affiliate link down below in the video description. If you click that, uh, it'll not only take you to the product, but if you buy it from that link, it gives us a little kickback and helps us out. So thanks for that in advance if you do it. So far, this thing's pretty cool, and let's put it to the test. So, I'm not going all the way through with this. Uh, right, we just want to drill through just this layer. Now, if we drill through, there's going to be a plug on the inside we're going to have to fish out. Yep. You ever drop a pick in a guitar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a guitar hole is that big, <laughs> yeah. and a pick is that big. Yeah, we'll get it. All right. You want to give it a shot? Yeah. Oh, slow. Yeah, I'm getting a little slow. spring pushing the thing and through. Well, now there's a plug down in there. <laughs> it's like you called that. Let's see if we can get that out. I got some long. I've also got a grabulator. A grabulator? He's got a grabulator. <laughs> what on earth is that? You may not want the answer to that. That's a, oh, that's a little tweet, 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 tweet. Little grabulator. Little grabulator. <laughs> it's a grabulator. <laughs> OG members of the channel will remember that one. Well, that sure is a nice way to drill that hole. I wonder now if our pipe will fit. That's a good fit right there. Look at that. It's almost like 27 mil is perfect for a three quarter inch schedule 40 pipe. It's kind of nice. Look at that. It's gonna look good. So these pipes are what will connect the two halves of this ottoman in this case. You start to see here leather stretched in between two frames with a crossbar down low. That is what we are going after. You can see in this drawing, the swag's leather here, and ottoman chair combo. Well, I mean, 
there's other ways we could have done this, but that sure makes it easy. I mean, the only best way I could think of is sticking it on the bridge port and doing something similar with the bridge port itself. Which we very well could. We have that tool. Not many people have this tool. Yeah, that, if you didn't have it, is four or five grand versus 350 bucks. Yeah. So that's pretty huge. And then, of course, the other option would be, so we all know what hole saws are. These annular cutters are essentially the machinist version of a hole saw. You can take these slower. These like a higher speed and they usually are less precise. I imagine the point of these is to be more precise. You can run them slower, or at least you should, unless they're carbide. This is just high, high speed steel, so. Yeah, so many times I use the, uh, when using the hole saws on a, on a piece of metal, like once you stick this in there. So when I'm sitting here doing this number on this same hole, if I'm plug cutting through, the quarter inch drill bit goes through first and centers the hole saw itself, but then it still has a little bit of wobble. So this outside edge tends to have scratches and all kinds of stuff. Um, it won't have a fine edge yeah. there. Our client for this build, it needs to be nice and precision. Everything needs to look clean and look yeah. right. Yeah, so, the idea is it, for it to look at kind of monolithic, if you will. Like it's all just one piece, sharp edges, as if we cut this square out of a solid sheet of one inch plate. That's right. kind of the look we're going for. So all the penetrations should be clean, edges crisp, welds flat, everything sanded flat. We might end up plating these, nickel or chrome plating. So that's why we're paying so much attention to the precision. I say we drill this hole, the other two. I will work on, well, I'll work on the cross member mounts. And when you, if you finish that, you want to switch to cut the four pipes and then we'll work out the captive nut cool. situation. I'm going to just stay on drilling all of these. Yeah. Cause we got to do so three can, eights on the other side. Right. So I'm thinking I might just hand drill yeah. the I'll, other ones. I brought the Milwaukee back by the way. Okay. I'm probably just going to hand drill the other side. So with the mag drill, we've only got 12 mil. That's, that's a little bit too satisfying. It's a holder. <laughs> <laughs> We've only got 12 mil as the smallest one. Yeah, which is a little less than half inch, more or less. Yeah, and it's not quite. So I think nine and a half Thir mil. That would be half. Yeah, 13 is usually half-ish. Yeah, so this is slightly less. That's nice though. Yeah. M, well, that would make sense. Yeah. M12. M12. 12 mil. Yeah. You can say it either way. <laughs> <laughs> Metric 12. Yeah. So since we only have 12 mil, with this guy, uh, and we're using a three eighths threaded. A new order of three eighths drill bits. Then uh, on the other side, I'm gonna drill with a three eighths bit. So yeah. I'll probably step it up a little bit. Cool. And that hole's gonna be covered anyway. That's correct. Yeah. Time to get our hands dirty. Oh, too late. Cool. So I'm beginning to wonder how, how I've made it this long without a mag drill. If I wasn't given the opportunity to receive one from Vivor, I wonder how much longer it would have been before I bought one. Because I honestly, as soon as I saw this build and how we were gonna do it, I was thinking a mag drill would be perfect to pop those holes. So I may have taken the plunge anyway with this product project. But now you see what they can do and you'll continue to see, because why it's still going. So why it's been having a few issues actually. Well, I've got everything with this last hole drilled, right? So the way we made this, um, this, these pieces, it's important to have the seam on the inside so that once everything is finished, then all the outside looks spot on as good as we can, right? So 
what I'm noticing is while I'm drilling this last hole, if I get it lined up and then engage the magnet, what was happening while I was drilling is that the, the whole thing was picking up. See it lifted up right there. And then I'm noticing with the magnet engaged, like it's. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, was the magnet uh, not strong already? Was it screwing up already? But if we take it and put it on our quarter inch table and engage it, it's really strong. Mm -hmm. So we're suspecting that two things are going on. Number one, this tubing material has got a seam. And while we're putting it on the seam itself, it's not seating all the way on the metal itself perfectly flat. This before. tubing like never, sometimes isn't flat. So you can see that way there's a little bow. I mean, you could visually see there's a little bow on each side, especially that seam side. So it's because of that. Well, this one right here. Yeah, it's actually got like a whoop and a whoop. Like the, yeah, and a little crown. Feel it. Yeah. So because that's not solid and it's only 14 gauge, that's why we're not having. So that's good to know is, I mean, it makes sense. The use cases for these are usually drilling holes in I beams for steel structure erection stick, stick, and stick. that kind of thing. But it's nice to figure it, to push it to the lower limit and see, you know, cause it's more likely that if you guys buy this, you'll be using it to drill 14 gauge, 11 gauge, 3 16 quarter versus five eighths or three quarter inch I-beam webs. Cause so. honestly, if you're doing large jobs like that, uh, I-beams and everything, you're probably working with a company who's already bought the mega big version the of this. Hogan, whatever, $2,000 mag drill. Yeah. yeah. Which, let's face it, probably does have a better magnet in it and whatnot, but still, there's nothing wrong with this magnet per se. Uh, it's more about the quality of steel that we get now. Yeah. In the great country of the USA. Somehow I feel like blaming Russia. <laughs> it might be made in Canada. Yeah, a lot of it is. Anyway. So yeah, interesting, interesting observation there. But if we push easy, we'll be able to finish. So I'm gonna see what it does really, really easy. And this is the last hole. This is the only one that I've noticed that has done this. So you have the other side done? Yeah, I got uh, both the ottoman pieces and the other side done. And this is the result of our whole boring. So boring. You are so boring to hold, you bore holes. Bore I mean, holes. Turns out 27 millimeters fits a three quarter inch schedule 40 pipe. Real nice, real nice. So this is the concept. I know this video started um, to be about that, but now you can contextualize in what sort of scenario that might be helpful. Look what you can do with the Vivor mag drill. It's crazy. <laughs> this is cool. On, this, on a separated note, this is an interesting build. But yeah, so we'll have our little, little uh, handmade nuts on the outside and there'll be leather kind of swagged in between these, these rods. Teresa will be here shortly, the uh, designer in charge. And yeah, I think it's kind of neat. Finally making progress on this thing. What's that? That is yet to be. Oh, there we go. I fixed it. Touched. Fixed it. And then we just got to figure out if we're welding in place these bottom pieces or making them removable because we're still entertaining the idea of chrome plating these things. And if we chrome them, usually they need to fit into a dip tank. And if their parts are removable, then they're easier to chrome. That sort of concludes this video in a way. More about the mag drill than these chairs, but it's a practical application. This is everything you got. The Vivor mag drill J1C-40 comes with everything from 27 millimeter down to 12 millimeter annular cutters or the weld and shank core drill. Kind of a nice assortment. They, they worked pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. Yesterday. It did, it did all right. You know what I think this rope is for? It's a safety. 
if you're up in the air. And you accidentally hit the button while uh, it's on? Yeah, that's what that's for. Yeah. It's a safety rope. <laughs> anyway, if you want to check this drill out, definitely go to vivor.com. Click the affiliate link in the description and use this promo code for a discount. I think it's VV Pro, but if it's not, Walker will have dubbed over my voice with the correct thing. Thanks, Walker. But anyway, I'm excited to use this thing more and uh, break it. <laughs> We're good at that stuff. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Been a, been a righteous few weeks on the channel. The last two videos have blown up. I appreciate your support. It means the world to me. I'm trying to respond to some comments, but we literally get like 100 comments a day. So let me address you all in a group and say thank you. And good idea. A lot of you guys have good ideas. So here's a blanket response. Great idea. I'll incorporate that on the next one. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Random joke time. I've got, I've got a joke. What's up? What's the difference between a run-down greyhound stop and a, a lobster with a boob job? Oh my god. One doesn't stop? <laughs> no. One is a crusty bus station. The other one's a cr busty crust station. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> Perfect timing. <Wow. laughs>